Hi, my name is Corinne Derdulian. I'm a radiologist practicing at the University of Southern California in Los Angeles at the Keck School of Medicine. And today I'm going to be speaking about carotid and vertebral ultrasound beyond ICA stenosis. My talk is dedicated to Carol Middlestead, who was a pioneer in ultrasound and a true visionary, and also a pioneer for women in medicine. The goals and objectives of this talk include reviewing a spectrum of abnormalities in the carotid and vertebral arteries, including congenital and acquired diseases and diatrogenic changes. We're also going to be correlating ultrasound with MRI, CT, and angiography whenever possible. Now, first running out with the waveforms, it's important to remember that um, each part of the carotid uh, ultrasound has a distinct waveform. So the CCA, the common carotid artery, can have a very variable waveform of parents. It's typically a combination of a high-resistance and low-resistance waveform. The ICA and the vertebral artery are low-resistance waveforms because you want increased diastolic flow going towards the brain. The ECA, because it's supplying the external part of the face and other structures and more superficial structures, um, has a high resistance waveform. Now we all know about the carotid consensus statement that was published in 2003, where we correlate the degree of stenosis with the peak systolic velocities and the visual plaque estimate of um, the internal carotid arteries. The ICA-CCA ratio and the end diastolic velocity parameters are additional um, supplemental or secondary parameters, um, but the key parameters are the velocity and the amount of plaque that we see. Um, it should be noted, however, that the ICA-CCA um, peak systolic velocity ratio can be very helpful if we can't obtain accurate velocities and we need to look at velocity ratios. Now look carefully at this case. So here's a case of a longitudinal image. We have flow in the common carotid artery extending to the left carotid bulb. And we see an area at the junction where there's some narrowing, maybe about 50% or so if you kind of gauge it on a longitudinal image. And you have some color aliasing and indicating some turbulence. When you look at the ICA waveform, uh, you see that there's some delay in systolic upstroke. And this is shown as you know, tardis parvus waveforms along the mid-ICA and the distal ICA as well. And the peak systolic velocity is somewhere around 40. Now, it would be pretty unusual to think that it's so close to 50% stenosis would be causing this much of a tardis parvus waveform. So let's interrogate a little bit further. 